Well, good morning, church. Good, morning. good to see you this morning. God's blessings to you on this day. This is a very uh, special day in the church year. It's called Trinity Sunday. 
And we're reminded that, um, yeah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we've got a grand, great God and an awesome God. And so we're reminded of that. And it is a festival day in the life of the church. And so all of our, our hymns, everything is kind of geared in that direction, acknowledging the fact that we've got a God of power and might and that God lives with you and me. So that's how we sing our praises. And you might even notice, even the, the songs, that uh, the hymns that Paul uh, was playing just a moment ago, they all have to do something with God's greatness. You know, if you're humming along and hearing those familiar melodies that he's playing, um, it all speaks to God's great love. And um, yeah, that's the God we praise and glorify. So, great to be with you this day. Why don't we bow our head for a word of prayer and may channel all of our thoughts in our heart upon this great God. And we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for your great love. We thank you that Father, Son, Holy Spirit are with us now and always loving us, caring for us, bringing us to salvation. And so thank you, dear Lord, for that kind of comfort. And may we always know of that joyful presence of you in our lives. Help us when we struggle, but may our attention now be focused upon you and all that you can do now and forever, that we might live with you now and eternally. So all these things we bring to you, honoring and glorifying your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Please stand. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, 
We praise your power. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's mighty word. Good morning. Today's Old Testament lesson is from Proverbs uh, 8, chapter, chapter 8, I'm sorry. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way where the paths meet, meet, she takes her stand beside the gate leading into the city. At the entrance, she cries out aloud. To you, all, to you people, I cry out. I raise my voice to all mankind. The Lord brought me forth as first of his work. Before his deeds of old, I was formed long ago. At the very beginning, when the world became, came to be, where there were no watery depth, I was given birth. When there was no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its field or any of the dust of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the foundations of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundation of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. This is the word of our Lord. Good morning. The epistles lesson, Acts 2. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him. And as you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at the right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. God's glory fills the whole earth. Alleluia.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. At this they exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death? Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet fifty years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing together, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Now, children have a way of saying things that are, I think, very insightful. Uh, I believe they keep things very simple. And I think they understand life sometimes a lot better than adults do. I mean, for instance, there was an article published some time ago about insights that children had about life. Now, hear these. For instance, one of them is this, that, you know, if you're going to feed seagulls, make sure you wear a hat. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, kids know these things. If you're going to ask your parents, you know, for money, don't ask for more than $5 when they're doing their taxes. Makes sense, I think. Um, never uh, flush the john when your father is in the shower, okay? Always wear your clothes when you go to bed so you don't have to get dressed to get in the morning. I mean, that makes sense, right? If you get a bad grade on your report card, make sure you show it to your mom when she's on her cell phone. Very good thinking there. Never baptize a cat. That, yeah, I would try it sometimes. That doesn't work there. Um, or how about um, never tease your little sister when she's holding a baseball bat. I mean, kids know these things, I think, better than we do. Obviously, life's a little more complex than that. It gets a little deeper. And we think we're so sharp and understand things. Well, eh, maybe not so much as we think. I mean, Jesus, when he was speaking to his disciples, he was always talking to them about some really deep things. Talk about his impending death, for instance, and resurrection. I mean, they didn't understand that at all. He talks to them about forgiveness, <laughs> about eternal life, about the kingdom of God. I mean, how do you understand these things? So they really struggled, those disciples. And when Jesus was speaking to people who were not followers, people who weren't really intently listening, now he was really up against a stone wall. They could not understand. They didn't want to understand at all. Now, these people, they were looking to accuse Jesus. You know, find fault in Jesus. You know, have, him, have a misstep there. And so they wanted to get to him in that way, trying to understand why does he speak the way he does, and then condemn him for what he is saying. So what we find in our gospel lesson this morning is Jesus making two outlandish claims. Two outlandish claims. The first one, he says, is this. He says that, listen to my word, and you'll never die. <laughs> Where do you go with that? Listen to my word, and you'll never die. In fact, he says, very truly. Now, very often in the Gospel of John, You'll see those words, truly, truly, or in another translation, very truly. Jesus underscores this fact that he's speaking factually. He's speaking truth here. Listen to what I have to say, because what I'm saying is not only important, it's real. It's divine. So he says, very truly. You listen to my word, and you will never die. In other words, believe in what I say. Not only hear it, but believe it. And if you believe in God's word, you won't die. You'll live eternally. You'll live forevermore. That's the first claim. The second claim is also very interesting, because here Jesus, he says to them, he says, before Abraham existed, I am. In other words, before Abraham lived and walked on this earth, which was about well, almost 2,000 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, before Abraham, I existed. Now that is really going to get everybody riled at this point. Going to get them really upset because, what do you mean? How can you be older than our patriarch, our father Abraham? He's like the George Washington you know, of the nation there. You know, he is the beginning, really, of the patriarchs there and the believers. So, 
How can you say that you're before him? And Jesus says those words, that designation, I am. Now, I know I've shared this with you before in sermons, and I'm going to do it again, because that phrase, that, that claim of Jesus, that label of himself is extremely important, because it goes back to the fact of Moses when he's before God in the burning bush, and Moses is saying, you know, you want me to go back to Egypt there, you want me to, to speak to Pharaoh and, and show him this power. Who do I say this power comes from? Where does it come from? In the burning bush, God himself says, you just tell Pharaoh, I am. In other words, I always was, I always am, I always will be. I am the sovereign, great, awesome God here. That's what you tell Pharaoh. That's where your power and strength comes from. Now, Jesus uses that many times in the Gospel of John. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. I am the living water. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and life. And here he says it also. I am. That's why they're so angry at him. Because Jesus is claiming to be God. And they don't like that. And what's the punishment for that? It says it right there. They pick up stones. They want to stone him to death because that's the punishment for blasphemy. And so there's a great claim that Jesus is making. And yet, it is hard to understand all of this. Once you start to think about it, and you see how deep Jesus is speaking here, it's difficult to understand. We think we're so clever, and we understand. We're sharp of mind, right? And I can handle it all. Yeah, really? I mean, I can't even understand my wife. The preacher said with a gleam in his eye, you know? Understand your children? How about trying to understand yourself? Why did I do that? Why did I say what I did? You know, I'm constantly kind of like, like, like reflecting on what I said and say, want to take some things back, you know, because I, I don't, why did I do that? We don't understand ourselves at times. And now, now we're speaking theology, and on this day of Holy Trinity, Sunday after Pentecost, here we have something really quite deep. Go ahead, explain to me the Holy Trinity. Yeah. How hard is that to understand? Now, we, we understand it. Okay, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Oh, you have three gods? No, I don't have three gods. I only have one God. Wait, wait a second. You said Father, but you said Jesus is God. Holy Spirit is God. You know, come on, explain that. What does that mean? It's so hard to do that. Logically, it doesn't make sense at all. We can't understand it or explain it to other people. In fact, the word Trinity is not even in the Bible. Would you believe that? The word Trinity is not in the Bible. That's a human concoction, if you will, understanding what the Bible says. And so, yeah, it's difficult. Augustine, who was an um, early Christian theologian going way back centuries, he had a hard time, smart guy, trying to understand what the Holy Trinity was all about. One day, he's walking by the ocean, and he sees a boy there doing what boys would normally do at the ocean. They dig a hole in the sand, right? And then they go to the water with their bucket, and they fill it up with water, go back to the hole, pour it in, go back and forth back and forth. Augustine goes up to the boy and says, what are you doing? And he says, well, I am taking the whole ocean and pouring it into my hole. Augustine said, that's it. It's exactly what I've been trying to do, understanding the Holy Trinity. I'm taking the infinity of the ocean and placing it into a finite hole, my mind. And it just doesn't work at all. It just doesn't make sense. We're trying to take something that is infinite, understanding God, 
and putting it into here. Finite. Doesn't happen. You can't cognitively handle that, really. And that's kind of embarrassing. It's embarrassing because here, the basic, one of the basic tenets or concepts of the Christian faith is the Holy Trinity itself. That's quite embarrassing that you can't explain it or even understand it as smart as you think you are. You know, someone once said that you try and understand the Holy Trinity, you're going to lose your mind. But if you deny the Holy Trinity, you lose your soul. So true. Because again, it's a matter of fear. It's a matter of faith trying to understand the Holy Trinity. And that is it. And Jesus knew that. And that's why in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16, Jesus speaks a lot about the Holy Spirit, speaking about the spirit of truth, or the counselor will be with you to help you to understand even the Holy Trinity to the point where you can believe. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to have questions, and you are going to have questions still trying to understand the Trinity, and yet anybody with any IQ can still understand to the point and believe that God the Father created heaven and earth. And that God the Father sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins. And that Jesus would rise on that third day and now sits at the right hand of God the Father. And that the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, is present with us present with us to bring us to that faith, to keep us, sustain us in that faith, in Jesus Christ, in God himself, as the one who is the giver of life now and eternally. That's the presence of God that is still with you and with me. And that's an awesome, awesome presence of God. So what do we do with all of that? Especially, especially when... You know, you're going through life, as I am too, going through life, you know, just trying to get from one day to the next. I mean, it's, it's so, so very, very hard. I mean, that's what we really want to know, isn't it? You know, how am I going to get through to tomorrow and, and, and hold on to my dignity? How am I going to handle life, cope with life, when it seems like the world is falling apart at the seams? How am I going to get through, you know, the stressors that are there in my personal world there and feel a sense of comfort and peace? Well, this is where the Holy Trinity comes in. What we know and believe is with the eye of faith. And we believe in this God who is creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. And this is an awesome God who cares about you, therefore who loves you so much and is there with you during those situations and circumstances that you just don't understand or get. Or when you're just so out of sorts and you just don't get where things are going, that you've got a God who's stable, you've got a God who is there for you, and a God who is awesome. And don't you want a, a God that's vastly bigger than yourself? Sure we do. We want one that's all-powerful and almighty. Well, you have that God there. You have that one. And so, therefore, as each day goes on, believe in this God, but believe, well, do it as the children do it. The kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, be that kind of a person who believes in this God who is, who is present in my life, cares about me, yeah, we don't understand it all. I mean, we know the words which it says in the Bible from, from Isaiah chapter 55 or Romans chapter 11, which says, my ways are higher than your ways, says the Lord. Or who can know the mind of God? I mean, that's what the word of God says. Know that this God certainly is not only above you, but he's in you who is part of your life and loves you so deeply, gives you such worth and value that, yes, is with you now and always. So be like children in terms of your faith. 
Look to this almighty God. Know in faith that he's present in your life. In other words, as the children do, just let God, all of God, be God. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, yeah, we don't understand it all, but help us just to believe and act that way. Know in faith that you are present with us each and every day, no matter the trial or circumstance, you are there. Grant us your guidance, your strength. Keep us strong in faith. We pray now in the name of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May we stand at this time and proclaim our faith, knowing that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is part of the Apostles' Creed as we speak boldly and proclaim that greatness to the whole world. And so, in unity and with great conviction, we say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. And he ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. You may be seated for an announcement or two. Hello again. Um, if you turn to the back of your bulletin, we've got a couple announcements. I'll, I'll bring them up to your attention. First one I see over here is a congregational meeting on a Sunday, June 20th. Uh, the election, uh, the, there's election of the following church officers will be held. They're looking for president, school chairperson, building grounds, parish ministry, technology, youth, and stewards. If you have any interest, please call Harvey. Um, also, uh, oh look, Father's Day is coming up next weekend. They have carnations out. Um, they, if you're going to buy or purchase carnations, please, uh, by June 15th, which is this Wednesday. This Saturday, uh, we have a men's group coming together, and they have uh, over here at Manuel, have men's, uh, they have something going on this Saturday, June 8th. Uh, there's coffee, obviously, bagel, and there's movies. Um, so uh, be, be aware. Um, come join us this Saturday. I'm looking at it. It's kind of cool. Uh, and um, come be with us this Saturday. You can bring your sons. Uh, it's a good fellowship. It's it's a good time, uh, especially as men in our in our time today. Uh, we we kind of struggle, trying to you know shame of our past because some of the Neanderthal thinking we used to have and uh, trying to stay away from being too passive. Uh, come come join us as men. We we share and show you what the Bible says about how to be a man. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. That's um, I think that's a great idea with the father son thing. A really wonderful idea. Very appropriate time to do that. Take advantage of that, guys. Take advantage of that. Let us now gather gifts for the Lord's ministry.
May we stand and thank our Lord singing the common doxology. Spirit, let us pray to God our Father in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, making intercession for the church, the world, and for all people according to their need. Holy God, we praise your name. Help us to joyfully proclaim it to the world and to honor it in all we do. Lord, in your mercy, gracious Father, Bless and preserve your holy church, purchased with the blood of your dear Son and sanctified with the fire of your Spirit. Keep it steadfast in faith, sound in doctrine, loving in service, generous in giving, ardent in worship, and holy in living. In all things, make it a lamp filled with the light of your presence, welcoming and guiding many to salvation in your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, be the shelter, strength, and inheritance of all who are hated because they confess Christ as Savior and God. Give them courage, graciousness, and hope, and soften the hearts of their enemies. Lord, in your mercy, kindle with your spirit the hearts and minds of the people in this place. Unite us to your Son. Use us to proclaim the gospel in words and deeds to all those we meet. Help us to seek out those who most deeply need your love. Give us courage to invite them into your holy fellowship, in which they may find mercy, joy, and an eternal home. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for students this day, especially those graduating during this springtime. Guide them in the paths of wisdom and righteousness in whatever they do. Teach them to love goodness, truth, and beauty, which spring from your very heart. Bless them and their families, teachers and mentors and friends who encouraged and supported them along the way. Lord, in your mercy. There is no other God beside you, who are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Give your incomparable gifts of faith, wisdom, and righteousness to all people, especially to those who take counsel for the nations. Conform the hearts of all people to your will, and bless this war-torn world with a peace that passes human understanding. We pray for the people in Ukraine. We pray for people around the world who suffer because of warfare. Dear Lord, be with them, help and strengthen them, and bring forth peace. Lord, in your mercy, dearest Father, gather in your Son's embrace all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Especially, we pray, for peace and comfort for the Ang family, mourning the loss of Sonny's sister Susan, who was called home to glory. We pray for Alex, who is in the hospital at Stony Brook. We pray for Gloria Conklin, who is hospitalized as well with multiple health issues. We continue prayers of healing and strength for Paul Darnell, who is in rehabilitation. And we pray further healing for Doug, Kim, Colin, TJ, Jen, and Tom, Sandy and Samantha and Mary Lou, all being treated for cancer. And we further pray the Lord's blessings upon Devin, Kathy, Shirley, Hugo, Glenn, Lisa, Brian, John, 
Marion, Maureen, Allison, Chris, Hunter, Danny, Katie, Audrey, Cesar, Rick, and Nicole, and others we now name in our hearts. Bestow upon each of them, dear Lord, health and salvation, and bless them and all who care for them with the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, your most holy and blessed Trinity, we praise and adore you for welcoming into your eternal communion of life and love all who have died trusting in you. Keep our hearts firmly fixed on you, the Lord and giver of life, the Alpha and Omega, the God and Father of all creation. Bring us with the whole company of the redeemed of every time and place, every nation, tribe, and tongue into the joy of your presence, where we shall behold you face to face and adore you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Lord and our God. Lord, in your mercy, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we entrust our prayers and petitions into your hands, gracious Father. For the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our leader, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before coming to the Lord's table to receive these marvelous gifts of his body and blood, we first confess and receive absolution from our almighty God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. As we gather to receive the gifts of grace through word and sacrament, let us first confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seat at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with you according to your sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, and therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the triune God, God Father, God Son, and God Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You have revealed your glory as the glory also of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. We sing together the Agnes Day. Open the eyes of 
my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you.
Now he stands. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray together. Holy God, we rejoice to say that while you have chosen to reveal yourself in many ways, each encounter with you calls us to return blessings with worship, compassion, and service. So we give gratitude for all your parental care for us through your creation. We give because in love you gave us Christ that through him we might find eternal life. Thank you for your spirit who leads us to reach out in compassion, mercy, and grace to all your children everywhere. In gratitude we celebrate you, three and yet one. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen.
Trinity, go in peace and serve the Lord.